What is the relationship between USP 790 and the particulate matter life cycle approach? USP 790 is concerned with the detection of visible particulates in injections. As stated in its inspection procedure section, a complete program for the control and monitoring of particulate matter remains an essential prerequisite. The life cycle approach described in USP 1790 is essentially the element to achieve this. Here, the particulate matter life cycle approach is the subcycle that supports particulate matter identification, characterization, classification, and root cause investigation. These steps compromise a small life cycle that ultimately supports particulate defect prevention. The data is trended over time, which helps identify commonly occurring particulate defects. That being known, 1790 supports the expectation of continuous process improvement by reducing or eliminating particulate defects throughout the process. Okay. As data trending is now expected, what are some of the challenges you've seen? I've certainly witnessed some challenges with data trending. One challenge is the confusion on what data actually needs to be tracked and trended. In cases of contract manufacturing organizations, they might be changing drug product and container presentations very frequently, even if they only manufacture a specific product and presentation once every one to three years. Thus, CMOs might find it hard to understand how to apply the data they've collected from a manufacturing run and how to trend it when factors change quite frequently or if there is a long lag between runs. What advantage does a life cycle approach offer? Ultimately, the goal is defect prevention, not just detection and removal. We focus on visible particulates since USP 790 is concerned with visible particulates in injections and products must be essentially free of visible particulate matter. The main advantage to the life cycle approach is the mechanism by which it functions. When a life cycle approach is adopted, its only course of action is to help support the other essential aspects of the entire inspection life cycle. This includes qualification, inspector training, setting alert action limits, and other key elements of the inspection life cycle. By adopting this approach, you can support the entire inspection life cycle.